Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It is me, ya boy, Faridin. First things first, not an advertisement, but rather a thank you for all of your likes, comments, and especially your subscriptions. Here at Faridin Studios, we recently just hit the 100 subscriber milestone, and I have been able to customize my channel's URL. This channel's new URL is youtube.com slash c slash Faridinmoto. I could not have done this without all of you. So thank you all for helping me get this far. Hopefully together we can continue to build this channel into something bigger. Okay, now if you're a gearhead like me, it doesn't matter if your passion vehicle has two wheels or four. At some point you've read on a chat forum or heard on a YouTube video, somebody mentioned catalytic converters and how removing them can increase the performance of your vehicle. You probably have a lot of questions, like what is a catalytic converter? What does a catalytic converter do? And how much performance can I really gain by removing my bike's cat? These are all great questions that I will answer in this video to help you decide if decatting your bike is right for you. Before I go into what makes up a catalytic converter or how it works, let's talk about what comes out of your engine immediately after combustion takes place. These are the reasons why we have catalytic converters to begin with. So the gases that come out of the engine immediately after combustion are things like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen monoxide as well as nitrogen dioxide, henceforth referred to as nitrogen oxide, oxygen, which is binary, meaning every oxygen atom naturally likes to bond with other oxygen atoms to form O2 molecules, and water in gaseous form, which is basically just steam. When we breathe, we exhale carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is a molecule consisting of one carbon atom bonded to two oxygen atoms. Carbon dioxide can be classified as a simple asphyxiant. All it does is displace oxygen in the environment. This basically means you may pass out if you breathe it in, but you're probably not going to die so long as somebody gets you to some fresh air. Carbon monoxide, on the other hand, is a chemical asphyxiant. It can inhibit mitochondrial respiration by interfering with the electron transport chain. Carboxyhemoglobin is the compound formed when carbon monoxide binds to the iron on the surface of a blood cell. This particular bond stabilizes the charge of the blood cell, preventing it from bonding with actual oxygen. You see, your blood, or hemoglobin, is designed to carry things like oxygen from the lungs to various cells in your body, and it transports carbon dioxide, which is a byproduct of cellular respiration, back to your lungs to be expelled when you exhale. But unlike carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide can sneak in in place of oxygen and is then carried into your bloodstream, and that is what makes it so dangerous. If that kind of went over your head, don't feel bad. It kind of went over mine as well. The TLDR version is this. It doesn't just displace oxygen in the environment, it also displaces oxygen in your bloodstream, and that is what usually causes death when people are exposed to exhaust fumes from a vehicle in an enclosed environment. Okay, so moving on to how a catalytic converter works. Typically, three-way catalytic converters consist of three gaseous stages separated by two mediums. Their ultimate purpose is to eliminate, or at least cut down on the emissions of carbon monoxide, which is a molecule consisting of one carbon and one oxygen atom, hydrocarbons, which are chains of carbon atoms with hydrogen atoms attached, in this case in the form of unspent fuel, and nitrogen oxide. So as I said earlier, the gases that come out of your engine are nitric oxides, carbons monoxide and dioxide, some leftover oxygen, water in the form of steam, and some leftover hydrocarbons in the form of unburned fuel. This is the primary stage. The first medium is a honeycomb structure containing platinum and rhodium metals. This is the reduction catalyst, which causes reduction reactions specifically targeting the nitrogen oxides. The nitrogen atom in those molecules will want to bond with the catalytic medium, which weakens the nitrogen's bonds with the oxygen atoms. Those bonds break, allowing the oxygen atoms to bond with each other instead, forming O2, and the nitrogen atoms then bond with each other, forming N2, and then release from the catalyst medium. So at the second stage, we have already eliminated our nitric oxides. We're left with nitrogen gas, carbons monoxide and dioxide, some leftover oxygen, some steam, and some leftover hydrocarbons in the form of unburned fuel. The second medium in the catalytic converter is made of platinum and palladium metals. This medium is the oxidation catalyst and targets the unspent fuel as well as the carbon monoxide and O2 molecules, causing them to bond to the surface of the medium. 
When the oxygen molecules bond to the surface, their bond to each other weakens and breaks, allowing each one to be attracted to and bond with a carbon monoxide molecule, forming carbon dioxide, or CO2. Once the carbon dioxide is formed, it leaves the surface of the catalyst and moves on in the exhaust system. As for the unspent fuel, it reacts with the O2 and sort of carries out combustion on a smaller scale due to the overall heat of the exhaust, forming the harmless H2O gas or steam, and also CO2. CO2 isn't exactly good, but it is less undesirable than unspent hydrocarbons. At this point, we are left with nitrogen and oxygen gases, carbon dioxide, and H2O, steam. These are the products that come out of your stock exhaust and go off into the air that we eventually breathe. At least, if your vehicle has a catalytic converter. These gases are much less harmful for the environment, and especially to people with breathing complications such as asthma and COPD. Obviously, an individual car or motorcycle won't make much of a difference, but if everybody started to cut off their catalytic converters for performance gains, we would all be in trouble. And people with asthma would be forced to move away from busy cities and live in less developed areas just to be able to survive. Now that we've established what catalytic converters do from a chemistry perspective, let's discuss if they affect performance. Now everywhere you go on the internet, there are people who claim to be the end-all, be-all, know-it-alls of whatever discussion they are taking part of in the chat forum. You know these no-lifers as their names will often have a title or emoji showing their expert level supremacy, as noted by hundreds of posts or comments, or even how many years they have been a member of the forum. Of course, these are often people that will swear by their butt dinos that simply putting a colder intake and some powered by Honda stickers on their car will increase the engine's power output by at least 50 horsepower. Yes, these are the same people that will tell you all day long how to build a 500 horsepower daily driver in one post, and in another post tell you that it makes no sense to swap out your budget muscle car's V6 for the more powerful V8, and that you should just trade it in for a newer version of your car with the V8 already in it. As if an $8,000 engine swap is somehow more of an inconvenience than a $35,000 car loan that you will have to commit to repaying over the next 72 months. They'll even tell you that perhaps an $800 Yoshimura exhaust will turn your Ninja 400 into a BUSA killer. <laughs> Whatever their motivation, don't let them crush your dreams or bike goals. You don't need that kind of negativity in your life. Okay, so does removing your bike's cat increase horsepower? Well, there's no doubt that catalytic converters do nothing to help performance, so the simple answer is yes. Removing your bike's catalytic converter will, in fact, improve its power output. You see, an engine is essentially just a fancy air pump. As it sucks in air, the intake valves are open and the piston is traveling downward, drawing in air like the plunger of a syringe draws in liquid medicine through the needle from the vial before a doctor gives their patient an injection. Then, after combustion, the exhaust valves open as the piston is coming up and pushes the exhaust gases out of the cylinder and out through the exhaust. Any obstruction in the air pathway going into or coming out of the bike's engine will slow down how quickly the air can get into or out of the engine, regardless of how hard the engine is trying to move the air. But how much of an increase would you be looking at by removing that catalytic converter? Well, that's a bit more nebulous. It would really depend on what parts you already have installed on your bike and how you have your bike's ECU tuned. It also matters how much air the engine displaces and how many cylinders it has. It could be as little as 3 horsepower, or as much as 1.21 gigawatts. Giga... what? I don't know. Anyways. So, is the juice really worth the squeeze? Well, take into account that aside from the obvious fines you'll have to pay if you get caught by a cop or a maintenance tech who starts getting a little too interested as to why your bike is so loud, you're also pouring nauseous gases into the environment. Might I suggest a less nefarious alternative to going straight pipe? high flow or racing catalytic converters. These gems can give you a huge increase in airflow while still cutting down on those nasty emissions that we don't really want or need. While this might sound too good to be true, I assure you that high flow cats are as close to a cure-all as we can get to squeezing out every last ounce of power while still keeping our bikes street legal. Just ask the professionals and they'll all tell you the same thing. Unless you're building a full-on race bike, you will never notice the difference between having high flow cats or having no cats at all in your exhaust. That means high flow cats are so effective at reducing emissions without inhibiting performance that they are the next best thing since ball bearing turbochargers. 
You can get a high flow cat by itself for if you already have your Dream Exhaust installed, or some already come as a part of a full high end exhaust system. Whatever your needs are, there is a solution for you. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to conclude this video. I hope you found it useful, informative, and entertaining. Please leave a comment, like, and subscribe so that you don't forget about that one Ferromoto whatever dude with the sick KTM RC390 and click on the notification bell so that you get notifications when I upload future videos. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. As always, ride safe and have fun. Peace!